Hey guys, Aiden here from Core Electronics, and today I'm going to run you through your first print with a Lulzbot 3D printer. So I've got the Lulzbot Mini here. It's one of the newer models of the Lulzbot printers. I've got this one unpackaged, ready to go. Let's follow the unboxing guide. It's all pretty straightforward. Probably take you five to ten minutes. And uh, download and install Cura as well, because that's what we're going to be using to control our printer today. So the first thing that you'll be met with when you install Cura is this screen here. It's called the Configuration Wizard. Now you're just going to run through the, the steps for your own printer. So I've got the Mini, so I'm going to select the Mini, and I've just got the standard tool head. So that's just this part here, if you can see. That's the extruder part. So I'm going to run through that and click Finish. Here we go. All right, so now we've got the print bed loaded up here. Going to load up our STL, which is the Roctopus. Just got that one there. You can download that one from Lulzbot if you need to, but it should come with your Cura installation. And there we go. That's our visualiz visualization of what we're going to be printing today. So the next step would just be to select the filament that we intend on using when we're printing. I've got some 3mm ABS filament here. I've just got a sky blue color. I think it'll look quite good on the, uh, on the print bed. And the first thing we're going to do is just remove this bit of filament. But right now, that print head's cold, so it's not going to come out easily. So what we're going to do is get this up to a temp where we can pull it out nice and easy. We're going to replace it with the filament we've got here. And then we're going to start printing. And it's just as easy as that. So go ahead into Cura and open up your control panel and let your printer connect. You'll hear it kick in. And there we go, we've got all the different controls here. So just, just a quick run through here. If you were to, you could just go in and uh, you can home your printer using the home buttons on each corner here, or there's millimetre increments, so 0.1 of a millimetre, 1 millimetre, 10 millimetres, or 100 millimetre movements along all the axes on the bed. And you can also extrude and retract filament here, or move your z-axis up and down. So there are all the different settings that we've got. I'm going to use 170 degrees here today, just to get that ABS out of the tool head. So go ahead and type it into the temperature, this top box, and click set. And you'll see a little graph there over time that will reflect the temperature of the tool head. All right, I think she's hot enough. I can't really get to the, uh, the hinged idler here, so I'm just going to move the axes across this way. So let's just move that one across. And there we go. So the idea here is there's two screws. We're going to put some pressure on the screws. And with our thumb, we're going to pull that idler up and out. So now we have access to this bit of filament here, which we can just pull straight out. Next step is you will be getting your Lulzbot Mini in this configuration. So just whack that spool holder up. That's what it's for if you were wondering. Whack this spool on there and feed it down into the feed hole. Nice and easy, and then just in reverse of what we did before, we're going to lift that idler with the little wheel up against the filament, put the pressure on those two screws, and pop it back into place. So there we go. Now we're going to heat this, this tool head back up, and we're going to heat it up to about 220 to 230 degrees for ABS. It's, it's labelled on our filament roll here. Once we've got it up to that temp, we're going to purge some filament through until we get a nice consistent extrusion. It's just part of the, the process and then we should be right to print. So let's go ahead and do that. 220 degrees, set that temp, and we'll just wait for it to get up. Okay guys, our uh, tool head's now up to temp, so what we're gonna do is purge some filament through using the control interface through Cura. So if you look, there's a uh, on the far right of that, that window, there's an extrude button, and we can extrude 10 mil at a time by clicking on that button. So I'm just gonna go ahead and extrude. Usually it takes about three to four clicks of this button, and we'll start seeing a nice, easy extrusion, which is exactly what we're looking for. So I'll just go through that process now. Keeping an eye on it, making sure everything's working as expected. Nearly there. Here we go. There we go. So usually I just extrude a couple of a couple of clicks through, just to make sure it's all good. 
Now we were printing with this blue AVS before, so it's not too big of a deal, but if you were printing with a different color, you might have to do a few extra extrusions, and that's just because it's all welded up in there, and you want to just pass through as much filament as you can. So now that we've got the, the tool head up to, up to temp, there's one thing about AVS is we need to print with a heated plate. So we're going to have to get this up to temp, but that's part of the G-code, so we're not going to worry about it too much right now. One thing I will recommend for every print that you ever do is just to treat your bed with whatever you need. So for ABS, we've got a PEI sheet on our heated bed here. It's not, it's not required that we put anything down. It's going to stick to it no matter what. But I do like to give it a quick wipe down with some isopropyl just to make sure it's nice and clean before we proceed. So I'll grab out some paper towel and some isopropyl now and just give it a quick wipe down. And you can see it just cleans up any extra plastic or marks that you had on the bed from previous prints. Obviously you won't have them if it's a brand new printer. But it's something to bear in mind for future prints. So there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. And now it's really easy, guys. We've got the STL set. We've got our printer profile set. What we're going to do is just click print. Now the Mini has a uh, startup sequence and it will heat up the tool head and the bed. It will then scrub and self-clean its tip. It will then go and auto level on these four corner conductive pads before it starts printing. So that's just something that is going to go through this process now. I will give you a quick word about what I've done here. Now I'm using the profile over here, hips. I know that I'm using ABS and I've used hips in the profile, but that's fine. That profile just defines the temperatures at which the printer needs to heat the heated bed and heat the, the tool head. And so for hips and ABS, it's quite a similar temperature. We're working with thermoplastic, so as long as it's above a certain temperature, it's going to extrude. We'll just let this get up to temp and then I'll just walk you through what's happening here. Alrighty guys, so we've got the printer starting up now. It's just going to retract any filament away, just so it doesn't extrude along this self-cleaning pad here. going to drop down and it's quite a vigorous scrub actually along this back part. Now the reason that we have to clean the nozzle is one, because every one of those corners is a conductive pad and our nozzle is the conductor as well. So it's actually creating a ground point and it's homing the bed, it's leveling the bed here. So we're gonna let that happen. Essentially, it's giving you a nice flat plane to print on, which helps a lot with that first level adhesion. Alrighty guys, so we can see that that print is going down quite well. Our Roctopus is coming along quite nicely there. Now the difference between our two main filament types, like I said we were using ABS today, but sometimes you'll see PLA is the preferred filament of choice for some people. And I just wanted to give you guys a quick run through of the differences between the two filaments. That way you can make you know an informed decision when it comes to that, that buying point. So ABS is a plastic derived from fossil fuels and due to that it is not biodegradable so it you know adds to landfill which isn't good. It's also got a higher tensile strength, it can survive in higher temperatures but it also prints at higher temperatures and it requires the bed to be upwards of 100 degrees celsius just to get that first layer of adhesion. Now ABS is soluble in acetone and you can do some pretty cool things with acetone and ABS We'll do a tutorial in the future about that, smoothing your parts with ABS and making them come up nice and glossy. So that's something to look out for. PLA on the other hand, now PLA is a bioplastic. I think it's derived from cornstarch and things like that. It prints at quite a high temperature of 180 to 200 degrees, a bit less than ABS. The bed also only needs to be at about 45 degrees for PLA. 
Now PLA is soluble in sodium hydroxide, but that's a bit of a dangerous chemical, so we don't really recommend that you smooth up your PLA parts with sodium hydroxide. Like I said, PLA is a bioplastic, and since it's derived from biomaterials, it's also biodegradable. So I think the general rule of thumb is about six months to two years of, of life in outdoor environments, and you'll be able to you know, keep the structural integrity of that print. It also is quite brittle when you print it. So PLA, it, it doesn't have much impact resistance. So if you were to strike a PLA print, you could nearly guarantee that it's gonna break. So it's something to bear in mind. Now, the big main difference, the thing that I will say is, ABS is prone to some warping. So warping happens when the edges of your print cool at a faster rate than the insides of your print. Essentially, you get parts of your print coming off the print bed, and it can cause all sorts of problems for people that don't, don't know about it. So ABS is prone to that sort of warping, whereas PLA is almost not prone to any warping whatsoever. Now there's ways around warping, obviously. It's not something that, you know, once the plastic does it, you can't fix that ever. Um, we've got a, a heated enclosure over in the warehouse, which we use for all our prints with ABS, and it always works really well. We keep the, the surrounding temperature of the environment at about, what, 40 degrees Celsius, I think we have it set to, and it just holds that temperature and our prints don't warp at all, and that's all we need. It's not, we don't have to keep the whole thing at 100, 110, 100 degrees, whatever. It's all just about 40 degrees and it'll stay flat. Something to bear in mind when you're printing for the first time though, because the last thing you want is, you know, funny shaped prints that don't seem to be working and you'll be pulling your hair out and not knowing what's going on, and that's the thing to look out for. Another great thing about these printers is this PEI sheet. Now you can see that that first layer went down really easily. The printer just sort of, it knew where it was because of the auto leveling system. And the PEI sheets heated up to about 110 degrees. And because of that, we've just got that filament laying down nice and easily. It's gonna hold it there. The whole print's just gonna hold to that bed through the entirety of the whole print. And you'll see at the end of the print, the print bed will move to the back the PEI will cool down to about 60, 50 degrees, and then when it's ready, the print bed will move forward, so to the most forward position. Now, if I was standing in front of the printer, it would be quite difficult to get that print off while it's at the back of the printer there. So, you know, that's done for a reason, and we don't recommend that you get your hands in there and try and take prints off the bed while the, while the bed's hot. The PEI at higher temperatures is actually quite malleable. So if you're trying to prise a knife in there or something, you're gonna cause some damage to your bed. And we just, we don't recommend it. Lulz, what doesn't recommend it? Just don't do it, you know? Just wait that extra 10 minutes for the cooling down to happen and you'll be sweet. All right, guys, so you should see that print bed coming forward about now. So now I'm gonna step you through the process of getting your prints off the bed. Like I was saying before, we have a PEI bed here, which makes it very easy for ABS to stick to it. But this is the bad part. Sometimes it's a bit hard to get your prints off the bed. So Lulzbot give you a little knife that comes with your printer. All the printers have them. What we're gonna do now is just prise our print off the bed. You'll see that one side of your blade has a bit of a, a rounded edge to it. So what we're gonna do is lay the, the flat side down and just prise out between each of the legs of this octopus. And then hopefully we can get it to sort of just pop off. So just watch me go here. So we'll just go one leg at a time, trying to not break it, because it can be quite brittle at this point. Might have to come around the front there and get in there. I haven't got the best angle here. Try and stay out of the shot for you guys. All right, so I'm getting underneath this leg here, and hopefully I can just wedge my knife there and sort of move towards the, the center of the base and just prise her up. And I'll do that for every leg and eventually you'll find that it just pops off just like that. So there's your skirt there. And that was part of the first, the first line that went down and that was just to purge any inaccuracies out of the filament. So there we go, we've printed our first Roctopus and it came up pretty nicely actually for the, uh, the ABS filament. So thanks for watching guys. That was our uh, run through of the first print with your Lulzbot 3D printer. If you have anything to add or say about the video, feel free to leave a comment. 
If not, jump onto our website, Core Electronics, and find some more educational content. Thank you.